prepare for an extraordinary journey to Mars as SpaceX showcases its mind-boggling third launch tower upgrade at Gateway. Get ready to be blown away as Elon Musk reveals the insane transformation and innovations taking place at the visionary Gateway to Mars facility. This groundbreaking upgrade will redefine space exploration as we know it. Witness firsthand the cutting-edge technologies and infrastructure that will pave the way for our future endeavors to conquer the Red Planet. This mind-blowing video captures the very essences of this awe-inspiring feat. Brace yourself for a visual spectacle and discover how SpaceX is going beast mode to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos. Buckle up and join us as we explore the cutting-edge world of SpaceX's gateway upgrades. It's time to elevate your thoughts on space exploration. So, stay tuned where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and its multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology and that is what we're going to find out in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. S SpaceX is truly gearing up for Starship Flight 3. There's potential for another immensely powerful rocket to lift off within the next few weeks provided the launch license is approved in time. Yesterday, Super Heavy Booster 10 was rolled out to the launch complex joining Starship 28 all set for their test campaign. SpaceX posted on X sharing three photos of the spacecraft involved stating Flight 3 vehicles are on the pad at Starbase for testing ahead of Starship's next launch. Musk also shared in a tweet, Starship Super Heavy Booster to the launch pad. SpaceX woke up B-10 bright and early, transporting it to the launch site in a festive Christmas parade-like fashion, accompanied by snowmen and Rudolph riding on the counterweights in the front of the new booster transport stand. Despite limited views due to the new transport stands, Booster 10 seems to have all its engines and shielding intact. The way SpaceX transported it has left me extremely impressed. It's hard to imagine any other space company rolling out their multi-million dollar rocket prototype with such a whimsical transporter. SpaceX truly knows how to create enjoyable moments, alleviating all the fatigue. Upon reaching the launch pad, B-10 was swiftly positioned for a lift onto the orbital launch mount, prepping for pre-launch testing. The catching arm then locked onto the lift points. This marks the first lift of a booster off the new style of transport stand, theoretically enabling automated hold-down release instead of manual intervention. However, at the time of this report, workers are presently reattaching pressure hoses to B-10 to keep this mammoth securely on the ground. It wouldn't be surprising if B-10 is already seated on its stand while you're here watching the video. And while Ship 28 had a spin prime test of the second stage Starship last weekend, this test checks the pumps on the rockets to ensure that they can inject fuel and oxidizer into the engines during later tests and at the time of launch. The next stage after a spin prime test is a static fire, which lights up the engines. If this is successful, then the rocket is ready for launch, provided that SpaceX is confident about its tanks and their ability to withstand fueling and pressurization. Regarding the schedule, today's closure has now been revoked, but we still have another alternative date tomorrow from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening. It should be because mounting the booster on the OLM is taking precedence first. It would not be surprising if B-10 would be given priority for testing before Ship 28. There is the possibility that SpaceX will conduct additional cryogenic resistance tests with B-10 sooner and perhaps with the entire stack due to recent upgrades they have completed at the OTF. Tests may quickly take place such as cryogenic resistance tests, testing all 33 engines simultaneously followed by static fire tests of all 33 engines before being flight ready. It's worth noting the positive progression, considering it took the company three months after the initial test to roll out the booster for the second test flight. At the OTF GSE-7 initially designed to store liquid methane but repurposed as a water tank is undergoing maintenance. Workers are removing paint from the welds around the lifting lug, likely to inspect the welds before discarding the tank. The tank farm expansion remains a focal point, displaying ongoing activity including plumbing, piping and manifold enhancements. Particularly, the launch area's entrance is undergoing significant alterations such as the complete removal of the container wall and the installation of horizontal tanks and pipelines. Additionally, in addition to the launch pad refurbishment, SpaceX is transporting the seventh section of the third tower, bringing it from Florida to Starbase, 
Texas. With a total of nine sections planned, this suggests the potential rise of another significant structure at this site. Looking ahead to 2024, SpaceX is poised to attempt a groundbreaking maneuver, catching the Starship Super Heavy using this infrastructure on a single day. It's an exceptionally thrilling prospect, symbolizing an exciting future for space exploration. That's why having numerous Starship flights between 2024 and 2025 becomes absolutely crucial. Quinchet 12 SpaceX's COO highlighted the necessity for their colossal spacecraft to complete a minimum of 100 flights before embarking on the lunar mission. It's an ambitious milestone that SpaceX is poised to achieve, consequently as they prepare for the forthcoming bustling years, notably the pivotal 2024 year, with Starship's awe-inspiring test flights. SpaceX has been swiftly and efficiently upgrading its gateway to Mars facility. Among the myriad preparations, the addition of a third launch tower has sparked lively discussions recently. For only about eight months, another completed Starship launch tower will emerge at Starbase. This will be the third launch tower following the two towers previously built by SpaceX. It might be erected at the location of the recently cancelled suborbital Pad A. The seventh section of the third tower, out of a total of nine, was placed onto the barge at the Kennedy Space Center on December 15 for transport to Texas. It'll join other structural components that have been present at Starbase since last month getting ready for an upcoming massive technical project. And if you didn't know before, SpaceX planned to operate the second launch tower in Florida, which was built in 2022. However, due to modifications needed to the ground support systems for Starship and the necessary safety measures to ensure that spacecraft launches do not impact the surrounding areas of the launch complex, leased from NASA, the second tower underwent very few changes and wasn't the suitable choice at the time. But in the long run, according to Musk's plan, sooner or later Starship will also launch from there. So the priority remains with Starbase, and the third launch tower will be ready towards an ambitious schedule. By then, Starbase could have two fully functional OLTs in Texas and two stacked Starships ready to launch. It'll be a remarkable sight to witness and a testament to SpaceX's innovation and vision. With the tower instruction reaching an impressive 145 meters in height, comprising nine welded and bolted sections, SpaceX can initiate the process of equipping it with a complex system. This system includes bus engine-driven arms, fuel conduits for Starship, hydraulic systems, and a network of cables and pulleys, transforming it into what Musk affectionately dubs it as Megazilla. It could be completed at any time in the coming year thanks to the bold capabilities that often take us from one SpaceX surprise to another. So what does the future hold for Megazilla? When will OLT-3 be utilized while Starship has yet to reach orbit? We'll have a predicted timeline that we believe aligns closely with SpaceX's commitments in the upcoming missions. With the third launch having drawn numerous lessons from the first and second launches, SpaceX will demonstrate the ability to address issues like shortages, thrust anomalies, and fuel discrepancies with the Super Heavy booster. It's safe to say that this is a launch where the Starship will definitely reach orbit, but the Starship's return will be an epic splashing performance on the ocean. In the next flight year, SpaceX will probably attempt to use the catch tower, and it's predicted to be mostly successful on the first try. However, it might cause some damage to the tower and it may not be able to prevent the removal of debris from the tower and the super heavy booster. That's right, stories of bruises and bumps are perhaps not uncommon in space tests. Of course, they'll have to fix their Megazilla 1, and do you think SpaceX will be slowed down by the setback? Well, it could be said that only NASA could face delays if their integrated launch tower is damaged, but SpaceX is a different story. Don't forget that SpaceX has the third launch tower at Starbase, which they'll approach as a backup. They might experiment with successfully catching the Super Heavy booster and immediately study it to demonstrate that the booster recovery is fit for relaunch. Starship could launch four or five times in the next 12 months, including missions that fulfill the requirements of U.S. government agencies to advance reliability. By the second half of 2025, SpaceX might deploy the first test flight of a used Super Heavy. This is a crucial milestone showcasing the frequent reusability that lies at the core of cause reduction. A key factor in SpaceX's competitiveness in the vast launch market. 
However, success is rarely immediate, and setbacks are part of our daily growth, so I wouldn't expect the first reuse of the booster to be flawless. Starship will likely undergo multiple tests involving various orbit capabilities, returns, and landings. I predict they'll achieve successful Starship reuse by 2027. SpaceX will eventually have many launch towers matching the number of Super Heavy boosters, given their intention to launch once every hour. Having two to three launch towers may still not be enough. The combination of building additional launch towers with Mechazilla's unique capability to catch Starship will help SpaceX optimize time, effort, and money. This becomes crucial as Starship's private launches in the future become more prevalent than other companies. However, constructing a Mechazilla launch tower is no easy feat. It has a sophisticated technical design and construction process unlike any other launch tower that's ever been created or has ever existed. In the nearly three years since Elon first tweeted about attempting to catch the super heavy booster with the tower's arms, we couldn't have imagined how it would be accurately executed. For just that reason, is it worth SpaceX going through all the trouble to build this crazy machine? It advised a method to land the Falcon 9 rocket upright on its legs, an accomplishment unmatched by any other aerospace company even years after its initial success. Why does SpaceX want to elevate things even though they're already at the pinnacle? Musk clarified it on December 30th of 2020, responding on X or Twitter at the time, as he often does. What asked if the Super Heavy would land like a Falcon 9? Elon replied, we're going to try to catch the Super Heavy booster with the launch tower arm using the Griffins to take the load. People speculated that the booster might be too tall and heavy for legs. Elon explained, legs would certainly work but the best part is no part, the best step is no step. In essence, he's saying they could take the easy route but he's intentionally choosing the more challenging path and there's a good reason for it. Musk added, saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of the booster onto the launch mount, ready to roughly in under an hour. If the Super Heavy were to land on the pad like the initial Starship tests, bringing it back to the launch mount, even if it's nearby, would be a significant undertaking. It'd require a mobile crane and the large tank trad transport vehicle used at Starbase for rocket movement. The process involves the crane lifting the booster, placing it on the transport, moving the entire setup to the launch mount, using the crane once more to return the booster to the mount and then driving both machines back to the hangar. Many legs are not only heavy, expensive and complex but they can also be fragile and require intensive maintenance. For instance, the Falcon 9 comes down with significant force and although SpaceX uses a crumple zone called crush cores in the legs to absorb the energy, these need replacements after each landing. While this isn't a significant issue for Falcon given the refurbishment needed for a kerosene burning engines, the Starship and Super Heavy designed for rapid reusability and featuring clean, burning methane engines can't afford the time for inspections and leg refurbishment. Especially at Elon's envisioned launch cadence of three launches per day per booster. So that's why Elon Musk built Mechazilla. It was just his way of taking rocket engineering to the next level, while also making Starship construction even cheaper, even renewable, used more, and more effectively. In short, SpaceX is growing stronger with its own Starship rocket plans, and that also means we can expect some massive technical feats. While SpaceX currently operates only one Mechazilla tower at Starbase, the experiences and lessons learned during this operation are sufficient for them to construct another launch tower right next to it seamlessly and without any hurdles. However, there's more work that needs to be done and these are just the very basic steps for SpaceX. Surely, more fascinating developments await us in the future beyond what we can currently imagine. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the TalkTalk Talk app, here down below.